Hey guys, we're going to review um, things that we talked about in November on this video. So this is going to be our cluster three review video. And during November, we talked about three different standards. We talked about fractions as a division problem. We talked about multiplying fractions and we talked about dividing fractions. So what I quickly want to do now is review fraction and what it is and the parts of it. And then we'll move into multiplying and dividing from there. So I have the fraction right here. This fraction is 5 6. I have the 5 in green, the 6 in blue, and the purple in or the fraction bar in purple. And I want us to identify the different parts of this fraction. So the 5 that we have here is known as our numerator, and I'm going to label it with an n. Numerator is the top number of your division problem. The 6, I'm going to label it with a d because the 6 is the denominator of our fraction. Last but not least, we have our fraction bar here. And by now, you guys should have learned that the fraction bar is the same thing as a division sign. So I'm going to draw my little division sign there. Now, we can also write this as n divided by D, and that's how we represent it as a division problem. Um, we can also represent it inside of our division house, like many of us know how to divide by having the denominator out here and the numerator in here. If you were in my class, we talked about how to remember this, um, talking about the cowboy and the horse. So my five is the cowboy, and my six down here is our horse here. And the cowboy always goes inside the house to get a drink of water. The horse has to stay on the outside of the house. So that's just a quick rem way to remember how to write it out as a division problem, both written out that way horizontally or this way inside of your division house. Um, if we look at the fraction 5 6, um, what it represents is it represents something being shared and then who or where it's going to. So in this problem, our 5 could represent 5 candy bars that are being divided by 6 friends. Um, we could also have a fraction that looks like this. And this is a improper fraction. So when we have an improper fraction, the number on top is bigger than the denominator. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. Improper fractions can be changed and made into mixed numbers. The way that I do that is I actually solve the division problem. So I'm going to want to use my cowboy and my horse theory here in order to figure out which number is going to go inside of my division house. So if I look at it, build my division house in purple, my numerator is the cowboy, so 8 is going to go on the inside. My denominator 3 is going to go on the outside. And 3 can go into 8, 3, 6, 9. It can only go in there two times because 2 times 3 is 6. 8 minus 6 is 2. And the way that I get a mixed number from this problem, I have my whole number up here now in black. This is now my new numerator, so that's 2. And then my 3 stays my denominator. Oops, I was going to write a D there. So I have 2 and 2 thirds. Therefore, the mixed or the improper fraction eight third is equal to two and two thirds. You can also take a mixed number and change it into a improper fraction. And I can do that by following a phrase called making the mixed number mad. And the way that I do that is I'm going to 
take my whole number and my denominator and I'm going to multiply it. So 1 times 5 I know is 5. Then I'm going to add 5 plus 4 and I know that 5 plus 4 is 9. And then my denominator, I'm just going to move it straight over. It's going to stay the same. So 1 and 4 fifths is the same thing as 9 fifths. Hopefully that gave you a quick refresher just about fractions and the different things we can do with fractions. What I want to get into now is multiplying. And some of you might, may have talked about more than just multiplying whole numbers and fractions but I believe most of us only talked about that. So we're gonna quickly review multiplying whole numbers and fractions. If I multiply 1 half times 4, the way that I have to do this is I have to make that 4 into a fraction. And the way that I make it into a fraction is by putting, it, putting a 1 underneath it. So I'm gonna rewrite it just for myself, 4 over 1. And then all I'm going to do is multiply straight across. So it's actually really easy. 1 times 4 is 4, and 2 times 1 is 2. Now, if I notice the fraction 4 over 2, 4 halves, that is an improper fraction. My numerator is bigger than my denominator. But what I also notice is I know that I can solve this division problem. How many times can 2 go into 4? Well, I know 2 can go into 4 2 times. That gives me 4. So 4 over 2 is the same thing as answering as 2. Let's try one more. Um, let's do 5 times 2 thirds. If we do 5 times 2 thirds, in this problem, again, I have to make that 5 into a fraction, so I'm going to write a fraction bar and put a 1 underneath it, and then I'm going to multiply straight across. So 5 times 2 I know is 10. 1 times 3 I know is 3. So again, I end up with an improper fraction. I have 10 thirds. I know I can solve that using division. Put my 10 on the inside, 3 on the outside. How many times can 3 go into 10? I know 3 can only go into 10 3 times because that's 9. 10 minus 9 is 1, so I have 3 and 1 third as my mixed number answer. Last but not least, we have our dividing fractions. And there are two different types, or there are two different types of problems that we've seen. We've seen one problem that looks like this and we've seen another problem that looks like this. So we're going to start up at the top with my green problem. One third divided by four. In one third divided by four. First thing I have to do is I have to represent one third. So I'm going to draw my rectangle out and I'm going to cut that rectangle into thirds. Okay, so I'm actually going to cut it into thirds. Now I know that this is one third, one third, one third. The next thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this one with my purple marker, is I have to share or divide this amount into four pieces. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut straight across here. And the way that I find my answer here is I need to know what one of these pieces represents. So I'm going to do it with my blue marker. I'm going to shade in one of these pieces here. And in order to find my denominator, I have to count the number of pieces that are inside of my rectangle. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have 12 pieces, so that number is my denominator. Then I have to count the how many are shaded. I've shaded in one, so my answer to this problem is 1 12. Now, for this one down here, this one's a little bit different. I'm going to start out with my green marker again. I need to represent 4 as my whole. 
So I've got one, two, three, four pieces, okay? I need to divide them or split them into thirds, and I'm gonna do that with my purple marker again. Now, the way that I find my answer to this problem is I have to count the number of pieces, total number of pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That means that my answer to this problem here, four divided by one third is 12. Now, what we are going to look at is we're gonna look at some word problems that I have written down here. On this first one here, I'm gonna bring my computer a little bit closer so you guys can see it. The problem reads, Carol bought one half pound of fudge. She shared it equally among herself and three friends. How much fudge will each person get? The first thing I want to go through and do is I want to go through and circle my numbers, underline my question, and box in my keywords. So I'm going to do that down here and I'm going to see if you guys agree with what I circled or boxed in. Okay, so here's what I've done. I've circled one half and I've circled three. I've underlined how much fudge will each person get and I've boxed in shared and equally. Now, I need to figure up what's the setup of my problem. I know that I have to do the amount shared. So shared divided by who? I know that that's what I have to do. What I have to figure out is what is she sharing and then who is it going to? So based on this problem, what is being shared? If you said fudge, you're correct. I'm sharing a half pound of fudge. So that's one half. Now I'm dividing that one half by what? I'm gonna go back to the sentence that had shared and equally in it. She shared it equally among herself and three friends. Well, if you look at it, she shared it among herself and three friends. So that's actually a total of four people. She divided it by one half divided by four. If I go to solve this, I'm gonna have to write it out one half. So I'm gonna split my rectangle into one half and represent it like that. Then I've got to take my one half and I've got to break it into four pieces. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to shade in one of those pieces. And what does that one shaded piece right there represent? If you said one eighth, you are correct. The answer to this problem is one eighth. Now, looking at one other problem, this problem here says, a farmer has 15 bushels of corn. Each pig eats one third bushels of corn. How many pigs can the farmer feed with 15 bushels? So if I'm looking at this one, I'm gonna go ahead and circle the numbers, underline the question, and box in my keyword. So I've circled 15, I circled one third, I underlined how many pigs can the farmer feed with each but with 15 bushel, and then I boxed in has each and feed. Now in this one, it doesn't have specific words like the other one had with shared and equally in order for us to really tell that this is a division problem. But I have to figure out what I'm doing with my bushels and my pigs. I know that pigs eat the bushels of corn. I have 15 of them. So I'm gonna have to take those 15 bushels 
and I'm going to have to divide them into one-third servings because that's how much one pig eats. So 15 divided by one-third. Now, when I set up this problem, I've got my share divided by the one-third. I'm going to draw this out again. So I'm going to draw 15 bushels. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Here are my fifteen bushels. And I've got to split each of those bushels into what fractional piece? I've got to split it into thirds, yeah. So I'm going through now and doing that. Now, take a moment to count all those pieces that are in there because that's where your answer is going to be found. So if I counted correctly, I got 45. That means that my farmer can feed 45 pigs with the 15 bushels. Now, hopefully this has been a good reminder. Sorry, my lights just went off. Hopefully this has been a good reminder of what we did kind of way before um, Christmas break and that this will be a good review heading into the EOQ that you will take on the 15th of January, I believe. Make sure that you ask your teacher if you have any other questions.